leading down at least to one game to put them here, and now battle continues. As you can see, the pistol round starts with the T side of none other than G2. Mouse what's on the defense. An early util deployed with a bit of a jump for info as well, hoping to see if there was any util to be dropped on B. Nothing but the flashes on Carrigan's back. He's got them attached in CT. Oh, look how deep into towards Pit Frozen is currently maybe even playing a retake setup towards A. So Chris J just had a look through long doors, saw that nothing was home, and now he's rotating back towards Car. Frozen will have a bit of a look up, and we saw a lot of cat executes from G2 yesterday against North. Yeah, that might be on the docket again today. They really like the cross smokes. I'll throw two smokes, one deep, just onto the uh, cross towards Gandalf. Very quiet stuff here from G2. They like this. What, they, what we saw a lot from their previous uh, Dust 2 was the affinity for short XX into B mids and A site takes. And this seems to be the latter. That's a smoke that will fly all the way. One towards CT, one towards the B doors. Where do you go off this then? Both landing on the CT side. No info at all. Shots confirming the steps. Now Rops has taken flak. Very low. Carrigan's actually got the destabilizing frag. A great push. Now in the site, Hunter has made a bit of a meal of that. If you can find Rops, it's all is forgiven. Finally, he's gone down and they just about get into the site, but they don't have the bomb. The CTs have it now. Carrigan's frag has won them this. And now, well, sure, you're in B. You don't have the bomb, though. Nine and seconds. tucked in. This is a round over. They need to die. Hunter gets the frag. They don't have time. The CTs can just run away. Uh, they learned their lesson from the other day against Astralis. No loss bonus for Hunter and Nexa. Um, that sucks. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. If teams are going to continue to play these T rounds so late, and as soon as the nail is in the coffin and you don't have to give them anything, the CTs getting the bonus of the frags <laughs> is really good. Yeah, but denying sure. them anything is even better. Nexa had $400. Look what he's bought. A smoke. Just keep that USP and a smoke. He didn't even have Kevlar in that round because he was one of the utility bitches. So for him, he's going into the next round to play extremely hamstrung. You've got Kenny onto this scout. Let's see what damage he can do. Deagles for the other three. Molotov forces Nico back. I thought he was going to have a look in there. That flash would have sealed the deal. They do get BMS across towards Pit. Chris J scouting A. Carrigan is the rotation. And locking down B will be frozen and Rops quirt the duo on the B bomb site. Once again, short control. I wonder if Mouse Sports will take the fight to them when we look at the gun rounds to make sure they can't just execute so cleanly through this cap position time and time again, because up to this point, it looks like a dry run simulator for G2. Smokes to work with, could be the Avangar. Thrown on out, it'll be exactly that. Going to try and one way this, Carrigan awares. Christian needs to be careful here, these deagles sting. Go on, Chris. Perfect. Right into the center of mass. Nico goes down off the initial tagging on that long molly. Chris does catch Kenny's bullet, but taking re-peaks, hoping Carrigan can finish off the tag. job and good tag. One more would be great. And he has wing clipped Kenny, finishes it off as well. Chris J, no slouch on that scout by any stretch. But the round is far from over. In fact, Jax would rather have the Deagle, gives next to the scout to play with despite his low HP. They're coming in from CT and Bemis late arrival from Long. That's a big frag from Rob's. Hunter thinking the off angle would work. Next, uh, needs to hit the scout shot. He's missed it, and he'll be finished off long range with the SMG. So a successful retake. G2 getting a bomb plan out of that does feel like it's definitely going to be um, the best of a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, nice to help stimulate for uh, the two that didn't have any loss Back bonus. to Mundo, but yeah, I think you might have to do another deco. Yeah, this won't be a purchase. They could go for Galil's across the board, but I don't think that would be the most potent of looks going into round number three. So they'll stay conservative. They will just limp on in with the Deagles again. Nico back down to the Kevlar Deagle. Jax is opting in as well. You can see Nexa there. Hunter, of course. And Kenny just keeping it relatively conservative. Just 300 invested in the P250. Wants to get the AWP out. He'll be able to do so. Jax using a smoke here. Ooh, and okay. That's perfect. I'm going to drop a smoke so it looks like more of a stylish kill. Yeah, I guess so. Just losing his vision in the last second as he pulls the trigger. Great tracking onto Chris J's head, and that's quite the casualty to cause. Okay, well. They're completely stacking. Rops is already moving over to A. I like they're the call. It's a gamble, and it works. It's perfect. Carrigan's got a good suspicion as to where they're coming. 
Running boost. They would have seen him on the ramp. Likely spotted. Carrigan drops his own smoke defensively. But that will enable a plant. Nice from Rocks. He's comfortable in those fights. And as is Carrigan here. Oh, they're causing so much chaos. It's only Nico. Oh, okay. Steagle. What am I saying? Only Nico. It's Nico. And now he can get the bomb down. It's a quick peek from Kenny. G2 convert it. He bails them out there with a pair of frags with the $700 sidearm, and what a way to do it. That wasn't even a buy, that was G2 being conservative, and now the coffer's rich. This is how Jack starts it, bang. And I wanna see the Nico frags. So the second one is a clean first onto Carrigan, and he just anticipates that peak from Bemis. Jesus, that's a big second shot there. Good stuff from Kenny to get on the board as well. Look at the money right now for G2, it Oops. is swelling. Last cannon all. A, a, a P250, a Deagle. <laughs> it's a mixed buy. Let's. Uh, no, I'll yeah. let you take the reins at the start of this one. Yeah, this is uh, quite an interesting little purchase. So they need to allow the AWP of ROPS to work, give it a chance to try and find some picks, try and find some damage. And the same can be said for Chris J on that scout. They want to get the M4 of BMAS to lock down long, and that's a good player for the job. But I think regardless of the janky buy, Maus need to search for impact. You cannot give G2 catwalk control time and time again. Feet will be spotted there. Speculative shot through the smoke, and now the AWP is known. G2 will know what they're working with. And this is what I don't want to see. If they just get cat control every single time for free, Mao's not going to be able to defend this. Oh, not unless Beamus gets a crazy double just like that. Now a scout takes down the orb. This game is going to be weird. Oh, wow. And even tacking him up on the cross and Exa just having more salt poured into the wound. Rops finishes off the job. Jax doesn't have the bomb and he doesn't have a head. Rops takes it from him. Mao Sports convert. And even scavenging away more weapons, they've brought Double orbs, set up. orbs into this one. <laughs> Damn, they brought such a sketchy CT buy into that, but they find the frags necessary. And now just look how kooky it looks for Hunter and Nexa. They're still strapped for cash. And the timeout's called. It's time for Malak to get on the mic. Yeah, I like this because there's a few options right now. Jax could go AK Head Armor, Kenny could go AWP, and then the other three potentially Galil for Nico and Lighter Buys for Nexa and Hunter, as you mentioned. But it could still be a buy. We saw Mouse Sports make something work with pistols, an Orpa Scout, and an M4. Why not give it a crack if you're G2? If you're able to get that cat control, you set your aim stars up to funnel out of bridge and just take a couple of jewels. We saw what Nico could do with only a Deagle. Wait till they get AKs in their hands. And I liked Mousesports adapting early, showing that they want to fight towards Cat and having somebody like Bemis there to get two big kills, that's going to be good for his confidence as well. As a long defender, you will be needed to step up a multi if they put the foot on the gas and go for those all in towards long. But it feels like G2 want to play this conservatively. And he's got a Deagle. He won one of these before. Yeah, and this is the thing, right? A couple of Deagle headshots in the round is well and truly open. Jax found them the opening towards long last time this worked. He's just going to peer down middle, three through the tunnels, quickly towards lower dark. There's a flash on Kenny. This might just be out the doors and go because there is a gap on mid to B right now. Carrigan will be that rotator. Chris J's posted up towards the brick box. So they want to stay disruptive with his AWP. And now Carrigan's rotated towards spawn. So maybe this is the duel they want to isolate. The big man, Nico, more than comfortable taking fights like this. They're giving a lot of space to do so. Carrigan is found. Nico missing and taking a heavy burden for the rest of this round. He's taken 80 damage. And now they know that there's one player who's an A defender nested towards CT. Carrigan's actually rotated away, so that information is no longer good. Nico and Carrigan again. <laughs> These duels. Nico's so ready. Jax has taken another tag, so things are getting very awkward for G2's deco here. You still have this one flash on Kenny. They haven't thrown that out yet, and there's only 38 seconds on the clock, so they need to finish. They don't want to go down after Not the again. timer again. Oh, thank you. 30. Carrigan's suspicious of mid. Chris Jay's given the responsibility, and if they were to one dig Carrigan or Chris, there's a small plant or a small chance for a plant. Oh, and that's Chris J taken down. Nico, what a fantastic placement. Oh, they're so low though. Bemis' taps are perfect. He's taken the head of Nexa just as he tried to be a threat. Looking for more. So precise, he's struggling. Nico, a moving target. Three on four though. Should be Mouse Sports retaking unless Kenny hits another of that's those. That's an orb. That's a weapon. And Hunter's caught another, this time not punished. They can fall into short. Nico just needs to bait. Kenny hunting. Nico survived. Frozen's caught the hunt. 
Bemis is low, very low. Nico under so much scrutiny, he's running short of every resource, including teammates, and it's going to be an eventual Bemis and Frozen Ace. The two of them recovering the weapons they need and will defuse, I assume, in plenty of time. Beamus yeah, they want to get the eight. double orb. So yeah. Bemis just getting off that while Frozen goes and finds the second. It was on Chris, ba Chris J's corpse over towards Car. So they will get both AWPs and Mouse Sports survive. I think that's the highlight is they survive. That was the lower purchase again. There wasn't a lot invested from G2 there. They get the bomb down, they make it costly, and they keep mouse spots honest. And this is how it started. So once again, it's illustrating my point. Go and watch the North game. See how many times they executed through Cat, and now look at how dangerous they are just walking, literally walking out Catwalk against an AWP. An adjustment in gameplay if mouse spots start to lose rounds, but it's still looking good. They can play retake. And use some early utility towards Long, Smoke, and Molly towards the long doors and blue bin. Carrigan playing for information and he wants to go for a kill straight in. Takes out Hunter. Gets traded immediately. But that's a great find. Hunter, hamstrung. Oh, Rops has been spotted there on that jump. Nico might repick this. Is he brave enough against an AWP? That seems outrageous. Oh, well, with a flash like that, he can take that space and now he's going to drop a smoke in primarily to screw over Rops. But he wants to deny it. He actually wants to flash himself out, or at least suggest it's a possibility. They're really jostling for position yeah, they're rough right now. They really want to make this feel like a threat. Another smoke thrown out now. Jack's walking up the tunnels. Frozen using that smoke to hide behind. And it does stop the Molly from being a threat. This is great from Frozen so far. Now he just needs to find some bullets. Oh, he's hiding from everything. And he does get the first. They threw the kitchen sink at him. Frozen might even do damage. Dink. Drop from Nico. Oh no, nothing can translated from the aggressive move. And now they have to work at a disadvantage, significant disadvantage. Kenny, defending B with an AWP retake does get awkward, especially when the smoke for tunnels. He's going to be able to hide. Oh, I like it. It's a good position. And they've used their smoke aggressively on the doors. He'll have a slight gap. Yes, Kenny, a chance. And they've crossed with the flashes. Good moves. Next to finding one. Bemis has pushed into the smoke now. Chris J could be caught, but he's used the smoke perfectly. Kenny, vulnerable now. The smoke might be his best friend. He's hit the first. They swing and they find it. Chris J has the time. And another round by the finest of margins, determined in favor of Mouse. Real chance there for Kenny. You can see he's adjusted. Just not enough time to press Mouse 1 and get the kill. Costly again. Mouse was just staying alive here, and I love the fact that Carrigan's been disruptive in that early round. I want to see more of that. It's the best way to deal with these G2 executes. Frozen doing a good job on the site to get one and a half kills. The Dink on Nexa making that retake easier. And a tough one. Wouldn't be too frustrated if I'm G2 just yet. You know that you're only one round away from forcing Mouse Spots down to an interesting looking buy. And over towards Long, Kenny with the AWP. He wants to go for a pick. Ah, uh, humbug. I got a chance. Oh, had a real chance. A little elbow jiggle. Well, that's plenty of long presence shown. They deny it completely, though. They've got three players postured over there. Now Sports calling an active CT side here. Oh, oh he's flubbed his smoke. Not ideal. Don't think it's going to be the end of the world. So they want to return to long. That's the intention. You can see that Nex has lined himself up one for the corner. Well, Bemis is going to be isolated here. He's on his own on an island. No one's close to help him, no even utility. So that's long control gain. Do they Navi this? Find out. They only have two smokes and a Molotov. There's a minute left, so G2 can't operate with too much of the map. They don't have short control. They only have long. They don't know if there's been a tunnels push, and mouse spots are starting to rotate over. I think it will have to be the Navi. Hunter, if he goes down to Kerrigan here, everything changes. He's a crucial component of this finish. Ideally, they start throwing their long smokes. Oh, this is perfect. So they'll throw their long smokes. Attention drawn elsewhere. Hunter just gets the timing as Kerrigan feels he has to contribute from short. And Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. You're in. He's going to clear this surely. Oh, no. They flood their smokes. Miscommunication. Nightmare. Okay. Hunter's one is dual on Kerrigan. Now the see Chris J has to worry about two avenues of assault. Hunter biding his time. Doesn't want this hunt to be rewarded yet. Chris is going to find him. Surely looks down, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Oh, Hunter's got them both. Such low HP, but such contributions. He's even stolen the orc for the final frags. Nico going down, but so does the bomb. They might have to save. Feels like the percentage play. It's even planted for Kenny S. Is it? No, I, I, I tell a lie. It's not, but 
Seems that Rops has given up, so we don't have to be too concerned about the plant location. It's behind the box. He would not be able to get anything more than a wall bang on it had they gone for it. And they saved double ops. I assume one of them might want to find something else. Yeah, I agree with that sentiment. Maybe he's just holding onto it now to take this low HP jewel that you bang on. And Hunter had a lot of impact there with that space. Flub smokes from G2. I'd love to look that one through. I don't know if one was missed. I don't know exactly what happened there. Maybe they miscommunicated on what they were meant to be smoking, but that could have actually fallen apart if it wasn't for Hunter's brilliance. The fact that Chris J wasn't aware is that he'd already pushed on up, taken all that space. But yeah, those smokes, they double smoke the same position. Just looking at it back now on Skybox just to confirm because that might be a problem down the track. Now they've both just done a close smoke. So, <laughs> yeah, miscommunication there from G2. But they still win the round, so crisis averted. They will be able to note that. That's it's something for Malik to get his pen out for. It's more of a problem if they did it and they lost the round, but because they won the round, okay, okay guys, don't let that happen again. Uh, Never again. Ever, 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 ever. But they're going to buy in, obviously. We've got two saved guns, a scout. MP9 and UMP. Oh, Bemis, this often gets unchecked, and that's why he's got himself one and a half. Frozen finding more than steady. that. A double steady with the M4A1. Kenny about to catch a HE. Boof. He pulls the trigger as it lands. He's got 10 HP still being pressured. He needs a quick oh. smoke. Carrigan jumps to secure it, and that is one way to win a round. My God, look at the Xs on that long side. They threw all but the kitchen sink at long. And Hunter's managed to get himself in CT spawn. Maybe there's an element of surprise there, but... He's got 70 seconds and Rops does get spotted out. Hunter, okay. What's your play? You smoke it and walk through it. That's what I'm thinking. He's so cheeky for this. And look at Rops, so passive as well. Ready for that. Big brain play from Rops. He's gonna peek in the walk up. Oof, Rops has done so much here. This is such an odd duel as well. Because yeah. <laughs> Hunter knows he can't go and get the bomb, just trying to do damage, and <laughs> Rops finishes him off. So odd one there. The all-in towards long didn't work for G2, and that's like we didn't actually see a lot of when they played north. They rarely went long. They mainly went cap for those executes. Haven't gone for it in a round like this, and maybe they should have as Frozen punished them. He didn't panic. He could see that they were doing the flashbang dance. Now Mouse Sports, well, they're up to six. Not too happy there, Kenny, getting run down by the UMP of Carrigan. Scoreline 6-2, to two, if you are listening on the wireless. Double Orbs still being maintained from Mouseports here, and Rops having a bit of a look. Jumping across middle. Great shot onto Kenny. That was quick. Dropping back now. They've already taken lower dark control. Trying to pressure Rops with the Orb. If he hangs around for too long, these Deagles, they will punish. He's going to get on out of there. Cool to see Rops using that Orb more. It's definitely no slouch on it. Very comfortable with all facets of CSGO. It's good to see, you know, the, the, the really good players like Rops, the Stowns of the world, obviously. They can just be so flexible. Yeah. It used to be, you know, the, the determining factors of a star player, and it still is, but more and more players are filling that role and capable of doing it all. He pulls the trigger on his second orb, frag the round, and whilst Jax's dig is potent, Chris J's orb is better. I think the frag... Just Hunter and Nex are waiting for their demise. It will be throwing out a smoke. Actually, that's destined for Chris J's corner. Cool little smoke. You can see what that achieves. Ouch. Well, nice try. Yeah. You're trying all the tricks in the book here, G2, but you're being found out. Carrigan will get the last couple of frags. Now it's seven to two. And that was just the pistols again. This time it wasn't threatening from G2. They've been able to make those rounds very costly, getting the bomb down. Nico hitting a couple of bangers. They even won a round like that, but this time not to be the case. As Mouse Sports, they must be happy that G2 picked into Dust 2. Must be more than happy with that. They did have their struggles just the other day against Astralis on Dust 2 and Inferno. But this is a much stronger showing here on their CT side. Now it's just Rop Solo B. Okay, they're going for a four-man lean, getting that early boost up. Aggressive cat, I like it. And there's a kill. Kenny, dead already. Wow, he is not going to be happy with that. I already saw the frustration building. They've naded, they've got out of dodge. It's a free kill, it's a clean kill. Just push cat, get an opening, and fall back. Play the number advantage now. Turtled up here, you can see just how passive they are. They're not really forcing out any fights. And now G2 go through cat, long control take, and Chris J put on notice. And they're playing retake. They have utility for this. Bemis with a full kit, starting to lob out some nades now. This is going to slow down the plant. 
And now they're just closing in on them. Look at this. Carrigan coming through Cat. They've got Long. They've got CT. G2 are trapped. Good start. Continuing to tighten the noose on this retake. But the bomb being down does give Hunter something to play with. And locking down short is a crucial angle held now by Nico as well. Look at this. He's counting on that short hold. Two coming from there. It is Chris J long presence that could really throw a spanner into the works of this. Nico's responsible for it. Here they come. Double. Next is one and both. Likely the round now as well. Frozen Beam is flooding in. He does hit a great shot, but oh, both of them. Oh, and he nearly gets Nico. He's still holding the line. Frozen's found the frag. Have they got the time? Not today. God damn, Frozen. One way to make it stylish, one way to make it hurt as well, because those frags, they're not for nothing. They're not for naught. Take a look at G2's finances there. You've won, but you don't get all the bells and whistles. Kenny doesn't get his AWP. They get in, but Frozen takes them out. I think the spacing here was very off with Carrigan and Rops there. Maybe a, bit, a little bit wider, allowing Carrigan to go in and die so that Rops can come through and get those trades. But you can see, it's just no time to get towards the bomb. Nico basically sitting on it, just secures the round with his presence. So time the issue. Mouseport's losing track of the clock there on the retake, and they've dropped the rounds. You can see here the GG.bet odds at the top of your screen. They're favoring G2 quite heavily here for the series, I believe. Carrigan tucked into lower dark, wanting to be disruptive again. And Rops trying to use the smoke to see if he can find some early information as well, wanting to hang around to keep the pressure of his in-game leader in the lower tunnels for as long as possible. But it just looks like G2 are frozen. Look at this, their footsteps not being too hurt as Carrigan now has an idea. They're pushing in. Carrigan needs to get two. He's dinked up one. Takes down Hunter, even does damage to Jax. And now they've managed to find an opening pick again. But last time they had the 4v5 advantages still dropped the round. This time it's a four on four. Four on four. Well... It starts the bloodshed and it's extended by Rops. It's actually caught Nico's advance up cat just before Jax's smoke, which would have covered that advance. So just a little clunky being punished by the capable hands of Rops on that AWP. Mouse Sports making a very strong case. Seeing G2's same prowess on that T side, but Keeping Nico honest, part and parcel of the mouse sports defense so far. Rops posted up on B with that AWP. And you can see how confident Frozen is in his ability. He's completely tucked out to mid. Yeah, Frozen's heavily rotated over towards A here, and it's the wrong call. So Rops needs to get both of these kills. Timer on this. Bemis, I don't think he'll sweep this wide. Definitely not over towards the quad box. Oh, it's drawn oh, the patient. Just as Jax goes down, Rops calls it. And so do G2. They've caught him in transition with five seconds to spare. Smoke and Mirrors has aided them in the plant. They have a lot of utility they for this. They can win this. Yeah, another smoke on Nexa as well. Kenny and Nexa talking it through. How do we win this disadvantage? Catching Rops with a death, no less, baiting him into the knife out. Okay, flash for Kenny on info. Chris is looking directly at it. This is going to be good. He's one, catches Bemis, knows there could be one close. Frozen spotted in the tunnels. Kenny, don't flub your lines here. Chris is pushing. Kenny's gone down. It's all on to next. I can't transfer in time. Mouse Sports, another one-on-one -on -one goes Mouse Sports way. Oof, another situation where they work so hard in the early stages to surprise G2 to get a couple of opening picks and then G2 almost pull out a round again. That would have been back-to-back post-plant disadvantage situations. They've been, they've been able to add to the score tally, but not here, not today. Chris J says no, gets Nexa having to deal with two different angles. Diffuse comes in and it's close. You can see Rops, he would have been so frustrated if they lost that based of him rotating. There's only one player spotted on the site and I think he must have taken that on his own. I don't think the communication would have been multiple spotted because it was just Jax. There was nobody else over towards A whatsoever. Timeout for G2 now. And these slower plays, they are getting picked off. So to deal with this, it's a similar scenes as what I was saying for Mouse Sports on Inferno. You could go faster, you could go more set piece heavy straight out the gate, but they did try an all-in towards long and they were shut out. Mm. So maybe needing to do something. They like to barrel down middle, we know that. You know, they go fast down the guts, they have the AWP overseeing, maybe trying to go out mid doors. That, yeah, and that's one of the problems, but some good utility usage, they might be able to bully him. 
And if they know that Rops has been playing mid with the AWP, then try and bully B, it's just frozen. So if you're able to do the, the smoke through the skylights into the B doors, isolate Rops on the site, Rops will be out in mid. Yeah, but what you're saying, Chad, and I completely agree with your sentiment, is the G2T side that worked when you, we watched it yesterday was getting not only opening picks, which mouse sports are, but also doing a lot more of those short takes into mid to Bs. Those were successful. So far, we haven't seen evidence that they can find the same picks and the same openings against Mouse sports. Nico, he's just paid a heavy price for that. Yeah, they're not being allowed to get short at the moment. So we've seen a couple of different options. Carrigan in lower dark, Bemis with a cat push, Rop sorping middle. Those are just three of the looks, and they might even offer up a couple more. But knowing they're up against a low buy here, they have turtled on their CT defense. See how far back Carrigan is, just tucked in towards Goose. He's not spotting. He will play between Chris J's information. Very deep smoke from back of Cat towards CT spawn. Flash towards middle to sell this, and out long they go. Go hits a crucial okay. shot, as does Nex. So it's the G2 Deegs. Can never write them out. Suddenly, Carrigan's goose position becomes a crucial position. You've got so much work ahead of you, and Kenny has got himself an AWP. Surely going to be set up for success here. He's even grabbed a smoke. This is great. They can do... Wait, they've got two. Yeah, they can do the proper cross smokes. Let's hope they throw them differently this time. Kenny, which one did you throw? Next is going to throw the other. This time, one close, one for the deep. We can do that on the fly. Carrigan being held now, I imagine, by the Kenny S AWP on that platform. And he's found the first. Find. Could be the wall bank from Kenny. There's a gap on their smoke. It didn't throw it. What on earth is going on here? I thought they were going to cross on the smokes. There was a gap. Didn't throw it in the uh, pursuit of that. Great shot from Kenny. Needs two more. Knows Carrigan was on the site, frozen on short. Kenny, very vulnerable. You'd have to hit just a quick look from Carrigan. You go out, spotting Frozen and going down. There we have it. Oh, Alex, you will not believe what happened with that smoke. Tell me. I wonder if we can bring it up on Skybox. Uh, didn't give production a heads up on that one, so it's no, probably going to be a bit difficult to very, do. Very, very odd. So check this out, guys. Let me bring up the drawing tool. Just focus here on these two players. I'll even give you a little box. Watch this. Uh, it's going to happen in a smoke. second. It's Nex is walking into the, the into the box now. You yeah. can see him here. It's going to actually throw, and it's going to ricochet off of Hunter. Watch this. He throws it. It hits Hunter. So it doesn't even get to the cross. It's just an absolute flub. Hunter dies on the cross afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yikes. Things have not aligned for G2 at all. I thought they'd piece together a lovely deagle round. But in the same way, Mouse Sports managed to do so on Inferno. 9-3. 9-6 sounds a whole lot better than 12-3. And they've got the opportunity to finish strong. A different call. Nexa has everything he needs, both in players and in the equipment. Chris J quickly given the uh, encouragement to back up this B mid. It doesn't feel anywhere near as fluid as G2 did the other day. No, definitely. We're taking a, a lot more here. liberties. Bemis could even molly those players set up close. He doesn't have that info, and he's going to hear the pin pulled of Kenny S. Chris. Sees it, knows it's coming, and gets the frag. Almost a double Killing as well. It. Oh my god, yeah, Hunter got hit by the collateral. He can't afford to walk through the flames. They're just walking out mid-dry. Did you see him cross? I think he didn't. Oh, die gap. Uh. Oh, it doesn't spread. Nexum doesn't make a single sound cue, and so Bemis caught off. Oh, great openings from Nexa. Two dead A, two rotating B. Holding the cross is frozen. He suspects something. He suspects something fishy afoot and cancels his quick rotate. Rob's holding the tunnels from outside as well. This is a good setup with what remains of Mouse. 25. T time gets a bit awkward. They away. second guess themselves many times here, G2. It will be the A finish. And Chris has got the AWP for the cross. Flash hasn't stopped him. He'll have vision for the cross. He just has to hit the shots. A good flash. Now they're across. Hunter with the bomb. No way. Just a third flash bails him out. Oh. Nex has found a third impact frag as the bomb goes down. A G2 will make a fourth round appear. Almost again, right? It felt like they had done so much work, their mouse spots. And then that double from Nex, you could see that Molotov from BMS. It wasn't burning him. It was burning Hunter, who was a little bit deeper. Now down to seven. And that timing, that gap, they weren't expecting a player to be so close. And that's three kills, all three for Nexa. Huge impact from him. And they need it. They're still in a position to break Mouse Sports going into the next round of play. They're not going to be operating with a lot. They're even hunting right now. Nico having a look. I think Frozen spotted this. Rops is aware, even shows up his head there. So could have lost it, could have lost the orc. Frozen will make sure that doesn't happen. Bomb goes off and they do hold on to these two weapons. Very, very important. And I think the fact that we're at this stage of the game and it was only a $1,400 loss bonus, they need to all in. Get Chris J to buy himself.
Drop Bemis. A weapon. See what you can gift him. Give Carrigan an MP9 no. or something. Look at this third flash. Just, just saving Hunter's oh. life. Because I swear to God, Chris is not going to pull the trigger that instantaneously. Had he not, he just knew the vision was there. Great stuff. Three flashes is what sets them up for the fourth round. And G2 need to damage control here. Even perusing the gap. Kenny's hungry for something. And so is Carrigan. What are you doing? He's oh, done it again. It. He's such a rascal. There is few players that I watch regularly make plays that I know are going to piss off pros. He just cleared up a tunnels as well. He can get out. Well, Nico's not interested in letting him out. Oh, <laughs> oh you dick. Carrigan. He's one of them around with the CZ, or at least he's got close. Well, this is the type of round that Mousebots love to drop with a bit of a fumble. Oh, yeah. Fair play. Carrigan, he's done so much hard work. There's no one on A. Yeah, Rops' his smoke is only to enable him to push up. And I this actually kind of like it. I like what he's doing here. He's taking a risk. And they could even boost to deny the plant. Do they want to? This is dangerous, dangerous territory. Walking up, Jax may not be ready for this. Frozen's already found one. Jax oh. goes, well goes down. Mouse sports, this is brilliant. Nexa, what are you made of? Double, needing Bimus as well. Good damage onto Bemus. Does evade the flash. He's doing as much as he could. Gets them both within an inch of their life. But that's a Mouse sports 10th. And Carrigan, I can't believe he's gotten away with that. That's Hunter caught out again. Very disruptive play here from Mouse, and that seems to be the name of the game. 10 rounds now, 10 to 4, the scoreline, G2. Really have to be asking themselves some questions here. What do they have to do? Because next, they're almost giving it a crack as well. That's both the Kovac cousins coming after Carrigan, neither of them being able to get it done. And Bemis with the MP9 from range saves them. Carrigan giggling away, and yeah, I would be too. They've saved the double orbs. They're carrying them through into the final rounds here of the first half. And that's really bolstered their buy. Things are good for G2 as well, and 10-5, that would be a nice way to finish off. Back down middle, nice and quick stuff. Backs are not turned for flashes, and it won't be the same play. It's just Rops to pick. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. And just some good utility work. So they've been able to push Rops away. Straight up catwalk. Utility is good for one of these executes, and maybe they should just go for this early. I wouldn't mind seeing something early out of G2, to be honest. It's been a while. Last round of the T-half. Why not? See the Avangar smokes deployed. This could be the Jacks drop into CT and do a B split. Looks like it is. Carrigan. Lurking on the edge of the smoke, Jax has been caught out. So ready for Great it. play. Carrigan's done his research. He doesn't control the spray well enough. And so, oh dear, they don't wait for the smoke. Rops is just going to get a freebie. Does get traded. Now Nexa, a crucial jewel. It's about timing. Frozen starts to shoot. Should be the trade immediately from Nexa. Kenny's the one to pull the trigger. So we have a 2v2 and Mouse have won us their fair share of retakes on B. This one, however, is an even number. And he's holding the push with Bemis. And he's missed it. Oh, Rather no. tagged him. Now Bemis has a new lease of life. He can survive. Coming in. No one's looking. Okay, next up again oh. with a impact frag. Bemis, it's the last round. He may as well give it everything she's got, Captain. 8 HP. He's charging in, and that's it. It's 10 to 5. G2. Damage control, but Mouseport's making a strong case for a third map.
Double digits found just in the first half. It's Mouse Sports definitely proving that they are here with something to prove. Playoffs are on the line. Elimination is the punishment for defeat. And already G2 are 1-0 up in the series in pursuit of the 2-0 though. It's been a collaborative effort. The double orbs, lovely to see Chris and Rocks hitting shots. And myself and Chad Birch are the ones residing to enjoy this one with you at home. Ah, Chaddy, what's your take? It seems GG.bet have made theirs clear. They believe G2, whether it's here or on the third, have got this one in the bag. I think the pistol will be a good indication as to what kind of defense we'll get out of G2, because the T side, it was a close but no cigar chapter, really. Oh, well, Rops has spurred out long, and Nico's just stripped them of their lives. Rops and Carrigan fall. And that's the kickoff G2 are looking for. Straight out mid to B, they're spurred on by that, and maybe isolating Jax over towards window would be a good start. He's peppered away, missed a couple of shots. They know where he is now, and they're in limbo, Mouse Sports. This should only be a matter of time. Okay, well, nico has got three now, and they're on the quick pursuit. Bombs actually made it into the site. This plant's going to be great. There might be an opportunity for them to go for the force buy in the next, and, well, G2, they're already close towards the doors. The bombs started ticking. And they're coming through. Chris J not able to receive anything as Nico's found his fourth. Beam is now in a one on three and can't make it work. But they do make it competitive and they do get the bomb down. So if we're looking at positives here from the pistol round, Mouse Sports, they can force by. They can drop some AKs across. They can get some Galils up and they can continue to threaten G2, who really needed Nico. Their star of Dust 2 yesterday against North, he had an absolutely monstrous first half. Not to be the same here today. But a great way to kick off the pistol. And here you go, the highlights. That's him up to seven. There's his eighth kill. Yeah, Nine. well, I will just like to make a bit of a public service announcement here. If sure. Nico wakes up, this game's going to be close regardless of what the rest of G2 are doing. Sure. Uh, and four kills on the pistol, certainly going to incite him with some rage and some testosterone now pumping through his system. Well, Mouse didn't force. I thought they would have dropped some AKs, but it looks like they're staying conservative. They've yeah, just gone for deagles and a scout. You know, Seeing a scout early firing off shots, you're going to kind of assume you were up against what could be a force. Yeah, and right now you can see that Carrigan's actually the man who dropped that across. So they will have a gun round next round regardless. And if they can make this one close, they can take away a couple of guns and even get the bomb down, then they're working with a lot going into the next. You said there's a t potential for Mouse to try and punish Jax on B. Well, just see what he's worth, you know, yeah, see he's if got... he's worth two or not. Hunter this time backing him up with a jiggle smoke. It's almost treating it like train a little bit here. Just going to be underhanding that upon any sort of visibility, whether it's a nade or a person. It could be four of them or a scout, but maybe he gets tagged by this scout. Chris would have to be very quick on the trigger here. Okay, that's enough for Hunter. I say that. He hasn't dropped his smoke. Dude, it's a bit late now. Pulling the big trigger. Gets two of them on the bomb and the rest are segregated. Okay, mission accomplished. The smoke in the end does achieve its goal. Should be safe now. I, I don't know how they give this away unless Frozen hits a couple of bangers. They've rotated Kenny across. They're trying to fortify the bomb site. Frozen with almost a gap, but he will get Nico. That's an M4. That's their best weapon loss. Nex is going to have to bail him out. Hello? Okay, needed that. Nex has dealt with it, and there is an M4 CT that I am so desperate to see them save. I've almost forgotten that Chris J is still alive. Thank you, Nexa. Appreciate you. Appreciate everything you do for me. Well, Chris wants it as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who can get their hands on the M4? Nexus says no. Dude, second round M4 from Nico. I told you he was feeling himself. Yeah, well, uh, they need it now because the AKs are out. And that M4 is going to be vital. They've dropped it back across to Nico. Nexa has to decide what he wants to limp on in with. He's actually dropped an ult for Kenny. So G2's defense just got a whole lot stronger. Their utility's good. The defuse kit's around to play as well. And if they silence mouse sports here, it looks like they'll be able to almost tie this one up. 10 to 7, the scoreline. This is the G2 map pick. They're looking to get this one done in two as Christian has an orb of his own. Heavily over towards B. Orb trained behind the molly. No one risking it as they will drop the smoke. So being very diligent here, G2, not wanting to give up a pick and more utility behind it so they can't get pounced upon. We've seen Rops go for some cheeky plays. He likes to drop his lurk smoke and even pushed into it quite aggressively. This time we'll just be putting on the brakes. Waiting out this smoke, so they really want the pick here on B. They might get it. Yes. Jax has got some info. It's a double SMG B hold. I mean, I'd be 
definitely feeling the threat now. And Nico's trying to bail them out. Oh, we get dinked by Carrigan. But the fact he lives on could enable him to throw out that util. Jax, what are you doing? He's just walked out the doors. Bemis gets the frag he was dreaming of. Nico, however, makes something out of nothing. Hunter fully flashed. He should go down to... Oh, my Frost. gosh. There we go. And Mouseports now in prime position. Next are even caught on the long flank. Kenny... No longer a question of winning the round, it's a question of holding on to his AWP. Can we can we think about that one a little more? Can I maybe skybox Jax's death? What was he doing? I think he was just trying to get there to help Nico as quickly as possible, but with that SMG, you can just see the range was not on. I think that was it, because Nico was put under pressure. You, he was dinked, like you pointed out, and, and at that point, Jax just trying to help the hemorrhage for the mid-to-B play. But uh, look at this, they know that Kenny has the AWP, and they're not actually chasing. So allowing Kenny to carry this one through is going to be some real problems for them going into the next round of play. But that was the B lean, right? They did put pressure on that side and it was successful. So we need to see if this is a continued decision from Mouse Sports. We've spoken about the CT hold of G2, the fact that they have one player towards long. That's Nexa. They have Nico to help him fortify that at the start of rounds with Kenny to oversee on the AWP. The money at this point, probably not going to warrant a buy. Hunter can invest in a rifle. Jax would probably do the same. Nexa and Nico don't have enough. So let's see how conservative G2 want to be because they are in pursuit of Mouse. We're up to 11 rounds now. And I would like to see Nuke. We saw some very good things out of Mouse Sports. Nuke, they actually beat Astralis. It was a close map for G2 yesterday just to get to this position against North. Really liked the way that Nico was handling a lot of the aggressive plays on his CT side of Nuke and Yard. He had Kenny as the AWP to help him out. And they will take a timeout to discuss their options. It feels like they've bled through their timeout's quite early, G2. They've only got one left after this, and it feels like there's a lot of rounds still to be played in map number two. What is the scores on the doors? Frozen and BMAS having great games. 18 kills apiece. 14 for Rops, 13 for Carrigan. and Chris J down the bottom there on eight. We've got 16 for Nexa, 11 apiece for Kenny and Nico, nine for Hunter and Jax on eight kills. But you're right, if Nico does wake up and take over this game, could be all over for Mouse Sports. Let's get back underway. They're brought in behind this. Flashes are good. Kenny will not re peek, and long control is gifted to Mouse. Do they want to take it? Looks like they do. Okay, well, a couple of threats then. Nico does get perfectly flashed. That was stylish. You see that? You can nice see the tail. Yeah. Getting away. And they smoke the long corner with long control. This does force Kenny off the line and enables them to clear pit safely. So they can report nobody has info long. And that seems to be all they desired. They were waiting for the re-aggression. They can't confirm mid-push. There is a rocks oh. battle that Jax does not need to be taking there. Tag down. Yeah, and he's taking damage too. In fact, what? He's lost the Spams jewel. The car, Chris yeah. Just spams him out. Takes his head off. That's a huge victory. I wonder if Nico's going to do the old-fashioned one-way on that ramp walk up. You haven't seen that in some time. Do you remember? I was yeah, thinking drop about it, it the in the corner day. of the site and jump onto that box, right? I think that was how it worked. Well, either way, they're under a lot of pressure right now because they force board in this situation. That's what they took the time oh. out to discuss. They've already lost their biggest gun. Yeah, and it's going to be awkward to retrieve with Frozen's presence long. Double smokes on the cross, but there's a B finish. I love it. The CTs are going to get oh super God. sketched out. Hunter's not even looking. Oh, Carrigan, bit of a miss there. Hunter's going to punish you for that. Bemis is the one to make things better. And now, with 20 seconds, it has to be the B finish. It's only Jax, and he was tagged. Surely not. He's got one. Confirms the bomb's tunnels. It's Chris J charging in. Nexa recovering an AK. He has to get onto the site. Oh! He's hit a fantastic reaction onto Frozen. Knows Chris is left. He's making plenty of sound. And it's Chris with a quick reaction. Jesus. Elevated, hard adjustment. Nick Chris J saves Mouse and puts the 12th on the board as well. That was a force by Chad. And now G2, this spells serious trouble. They practically have to give the 13th. Maybe even the 14th is going to be up for question. This is Frozen winning the most important duel of all. Even a second to measure. Yeah, this could have been even cleaner for Mouse Sports as well because the strat that was called was perfect. Carrigan should have had them booked there. Hunter in the back not going down. And as we mentioned after map number one, that pivot round where Hunter got two kills with the UMP that broke the bank balance for Mouse Sports late. Well, the same now for G2. They opted for the four spy. It fell flat and now they're just with these pistols and you're right. The next buy is not going to look fantastic. 
That's what should be on for the 13th here, is they will just go for a slow default, want to find out whatever they can. They've seen one over towards short. There's utility to trap them on in. That stack will have to be dismantled, pushing the mid doors. That was Jax. Mm. He's dealt with ease, and Carrigan knew that there were players towards Cat. Long control has been taken, and because there's no Deagles right now in play, I wouldn't be so worried. Mousebots can just scuttle up long. They don't know what they're working with. Carrigan might get swarmed in middle, though. Oh, oh, so many targets. It's a juicy affair for Carrigan. He gets four of the five necessary. But it does put an AK-47 into the hands of Hunter, who skedaddles out of there. Those are two good kills, though. Look at the mouse spot's bank balance. It's not great. They actually haven't been able to build too much right now. So if Hunter can do more damage or hold on to this, that's a big win. And the reason I say that is because if G2 do win the next gun round and start coming back into this game, it won't take a lot to break mouse spots. So maybe that'll have ramifications in future rounds, but we have to wait and see as mouse spots will be getting the 13th. 13 to 7 now, a bit of a stalemate here. You can see Hunter, he's not moving from that brick box. The players on A from mouse spots, they're happy just to hold on to their guns as well. The financial situation has been pointed out. And if you're looking for more Counter-Strike, don't fear. Not only do the potential for a third map here, should Mouse Sports convert this last three rounds needed. Not only that, but we get to see Big Clan and NIP battling it out today as well in another elimination game. So lots to be looking forward to. 13 to 7, the scoreline. G2 have had a quiet start to their defense. It was the first two rounds from the 10-5 half. And with it being a 10-5 half, you can definitely do the math nice and easy yourself as to how successful of a T-side mouse sports are having. Couple of absence flashbangs. I'm a fact I'm seeing only three for the entirety of the defense here. So G2 will be looking to find impact with their guns with the stop mollies. Mouse sports starting off with a default spread. I say default. Look how much short control Carrigan demands. They've actually got a very fast smoke, T-smoke thrown up on short, which enables them to progress nicely. Do see the utility deployed that Very oh, it's going to hurt, though. Bemis catching that nade right on the nose. I was going to say they're committing, but no, they've just isolated the fact there's a player towards spawn. That's going to force him back towards A, and they're going mid to B off of this. It's going to be the B split again. They want to punish Jax. Oh, no, it's Hunter this time, though. He's all alone. Jax is on long. Nico caught through the smoke. Carrigan keeps finding something. And Jax is going around the world. Nexa Wait. wants to punish. Uh-oh, this is huge. This is huge. Oh, Nexa oh. doesn't pull the trigger, but Jax does. Jax overcommit now. Perhaps Nexa would get away. A three on three. Where's the bomb going, B? Nexa's so detached. Kenny's the question mark. Hunter, what are you made of here? It's Rops. Hunter's got the crosshair placement. Gets the first. Knows there's a second. Frozen's dealt with him on the cross. A oh. great shot. Kenny may have won the round with that. That's been heard. Demus doesn't have the element of surprise does have the aim. Oh, oh my, my God. God, he tried it. That would have been something. The transfer onto Nexa doesn't quite connect, but Bemis, you madman. He's still got a shot. The doors have swapped. Nexa will have eyes on the cross. And so he opts for the doors instead, hoping that Nexa is the one to close the gap. You'd need a one-shot headshot and timing just as he looks away. Okay. But can I just say that not many players go for a transfer like that, <laughs> not a 180 A 180 swing. long range. <laughs> Imagine if he way. hit that. I mean, oh, I would have Jesus. actively broken the eardrums of our of our listeners, and I'd be apologizing. That would have been some wild scenes. But this is a great shot from Kenny. Not he flustered. Uh, but BMS didn't trust himself here. We will get it from Nexus POV. Looks away. Not quite sure where he could be coming from. And it looked like he was just going to tuck in towards Car and hope that Nexus would take that space towards B, give himself a fortified duel, but not to be the case. As G2 now, they look to bounce back. Scout for Kenny. MP9 for Jax. I not looking fantastic for Maus either. Rops onto a Deagle and a Galil for Frozen. And once again, over towards B with heavy presence in the upper tunnels. Harrigan's found a lot of success getting out those mid doors. Drops a smoke, feigns the cat control with that Molotov. Nobody with eyes over towards Long. Exchange is in, so a lick of damage onto Frozen. Now they're just set up to pounce on towards B, so it's likely we see a smoke through. This is a great weapon for the job here from Jax, though. The MP9 might spam them down. Yeah, and the nade doesn't look bad to soften them up. Does find Chris. Jax, biding his time, and actually does catch a good timing. Oh, just finding the bomb as well. He wasn't anticipating Frozen, but he's got the info and the wow. frag. Jax, that is around. That's the ninth practically delivered on a silver platter. Just have to find the cherries on top, and it's... Bemis and Carrigan that will try and deter. Jax's presence has completely destabilized this, and Bemis is trying to bail them out. They can't afford to let this round slip away here, G2. They have no excuse. 
Jax has found them so much impact. Carrigan will be planting safe. And Bemis, he's no slouch. They don't have flashes, just the one. And well, it's enough to get Kenny into the site. And Nexa and Kenny pulling the right triggers at the right time. That's around, that's nine. And that's Jax finding Good. impact. Good awareness there from G2 as well. Just in that situation, B retakes can tend to get out of control, but as that bomb's going down, they know they can isolate some space. So using the flash not to go for the kills, but just to take territory back as we get the replay here of Jax. And that's a huge maneuver. You could see the buy was not great. He did the best he could with very little, and it was fantastic. So that's the type of impact they're going to be needing from Jax here if they want to head over towards this B-bomb site some more. We'll be mouse bots down to pistols now, and G2 have a real opportunity to get back into the game. It's going to be Deagles for three of them, Frozen and Chris just on the Glock, so Molotov from Nico there. Doesn't land as deep as he probably wanted, but he can deal with this pushing up close in person. Might get a spam down. A second Molotov will segregate the pack, and there it is. Look at that, holding the trigger down. Three easy kills for Nico. Loving that on the stat lines. As it will just be Carrigan. He's in the side. I say just Carrigan. He does get the kill onto Kenny. The deagle at range is good. <laughs> that shot onto Nico is better. Jesus, Carrigan. Frozen's even got the bomb, so... Oh, never mind. Uh, Carrigan just took a third and a rifle. He could be on for an ace here, with only a Desert Eagle, doesn't adjust to Nexa in time. But damn, Carrigan, individual prowess, he's definitely sharp. What's he rocking? his time in the DMs, 22 frags, he's kept up, he's caught up with Rops and Bemis. Yeah, leading the charge, good Look stuff. Look at this second shot, that crosshair doesn't need to move a muscle, bang! A lot of the plays that Mousebots have made happen here is because Carrigan has, has made a couple of risks, like out mid, catching players off guard with the misdirection of their smokes. If that slows down, they need someone else on Mousebots to wake up. That's going to be a four-man alien. It's the all-in long. It's the right call here from G2. The Molly will be there. Info that there's someone. Oh, Hunter's been spotted. Chris J will go look in the flashes, catch him. And Hunter will eventually go down. Rops does catch an extra on the gap of the smoke. Early casualties for G2 to overcome now. Kenny already getting a little bit of pressure. He's so concerned about short. He's dropped his smoke and will use it to peak long. Chris sets up in the pit. If he gives Kenny anything, he can start running with the round. And that's a hard shot to hit. A quick jiggle from Chris. Confirms there's an AWP blocking down long. They have two smokes. It's on Chris and Bemis. Chris can throw one from Pit, and that's what he's doing. Nothing long. They plan to finish there all the same. Kenny really is taking some risks here. So, so convinced it's not going to be the long finish. But now there's a bit of a double pump. It will be a single smoke. And second on the fly, Kenny. I like the peak. Oh, he's going to do it too. This is it. And that could very well be the round. That's 14 now locked in. Valiant attempt. They took their time. Mousebots were not going to give Kenny what he wanted there. Well, the bomb will go down here. And one of the keys that I'd love to highlight from that round was something we were speaking about as a G2 strength. We were saying in the death segment before that G2, when they're defending their long, they like to drop a smoke off of that telephone pole that drops to uh, help give them a wall. Now, the T's normally would drop a smoke here, which would make the wall with the CT smoke. Now, this round's about to start playing out. We do have a lot of time thanks to that round from Mouse Sports. Now, check this out. I'm going to pause this in multiple different occasions. You're going to see where these smokes land. So Hunter has the first spawn. He's dropped that early. You're about to see that bloom, okay? So this smoke here will be used with a T smoke to create a wall. But right now, we don't see a T smoke whatsoever. That's not on the board. Play this through. Look at the T smoke. I don't know if this is intentional or is a missed throw, but what's happened here is it's landed deeper, which is segregated. That means the car player cannot now spot and try and take Chris out. Look how Chris goes for the fight. He pivots so deep to go for this fight, and it's actually segregated the CT defense instead. They were split between this smoke here. It was fights on this side and fights help. on this side of the smoke, so they couldn't help one another. I don't know if that was intentional from Mouse, but if it was, that was bloody genius. Yeah, really just forces you into the line and the gap of the CT smoke thrown. It's cool, and it's the final timeout of G2. G2 took Mouse's pick away from them, and Mouse are in prime position to do it right on back. That was a much needed risk there from Kenny. You could see almost catching a player with a smoke out. And if he's able to get one, probably dips away, gives them an opportunity to go for that type of a round, but it's not to be the case. And 14 to 10, lots of things to discuss in this timeout. And it isn't the Nico show, it's Nexa leading the charge 23. And now would be the time to have the Kovac cousins step up in a big way. But 
I think Mousebots have a very well handled T side. We've have seen a lot of good looks, a lot of misdirection from the smokes that's baited out their rotations. They've been looking the wrong way. They've been caught with their backs turned. This is a really, really well refined looking Mousebots on the T side as it is potentially do or die here for G2 in map number two. Scout, CZ, and then three rifles. Four man lean again towards A as they now, they now start their descent back down through CT spawn to fortify middle and the B bomb site. Probably just boosting Nico up here. He can help out mid to B. Kenny can now make his way back over towards A and use the scout like an orb, probably from the car position or the A ramp. They've locked down long. They're putting a lot of faith in Hunter. All he has is a CZ-75 and one flash on the B bomb site. So if it is a mid to B or if it is a B finish, I don't fancy his chances. That's the cool, uh, we saw it from Sunny. In the end game, little curve for Molotov. Short control. Carrigan demands it, and even throwing out a very fast smoke to keep Kenny on his toes. Beam is working middle. Nico was boosted for this very purpose. We'll be able to see over the smoke. Frozen's the only one with a molly for him as well, so he might get a couple. Timing's everything when he looks. Second smoke. That's his chance, and that's the bomb. He confirms it now, extinguishes the smoke, or the, rather the molly. He actually gets Beamus. Didn't think he'd have the line of sight. Nico, what a thorn in their side. Next has been found, but they came in a pair. Came in a pack, and he's pushing onto Chris J to risk from Jax, but it's good pressure. Naded down to three HP. Jax needs to reload. Yes, Robs has been jiggled out. He wins his first duel. Kenny upgrades from a scout to an AWP. Bomb on Xbox. He can smoke and retrieve that. Robs, for some reason, I feel like it's winnable, but he's only got 15 seconds. He'd have to be planting. Real quick. And Nico is holding his cross. Lovely play from Nico. That round is his. He catches three on the mid split B. And that, I mean, Hunter, faith in his cousin there. Yeah, and well combined, I think, with the long push. So Nico did a great job to slow them down. That bottleneck them, and then the long push coming in meant there was no options. Low on time. Mouse bots drop another, and G2 stay alive. But is it enough? Because with that round win, not too many players living. They will have to opt in with. Oof, an average purchase again, MP9, the AWP at least. Same thing for Mousebots though. Frozen onto a Deagle, a Galil for Beamass. Both teams are working with very little here. The seesaw of the economy back and forth. Neither team really edging ahead in this one. But it's a predominant B lean again, Alex. They've dropped out a limp smoke. They want to keep the pressure on this B bomb site. Yeah, could work, has work out as well, Hunter. Ooh, he's nearly caught Rops in the smoke. It's Carrigan using that tracer fire. He will get dunked, but it costs Jax his life. Nico onto Frozen. Now needs to address B. The bomb hasn't crossed, and maybe Nico can do something about that. No, Bemis has got across now. It's awkward for G2. This feels like 15. Rops is in such a prime position to punish Nico's window swing. And he does. Oh! And Nico, what an adjustment. Now it gets awkward for Chris and Bemis. Chris detached. Kenny, not ready, but a miss from Chris. Now he can adjust. He hits the shot. He's out of the sight. He can't he confirm it. Yeah, he's going to have to save and the defuse can come in. Nico hiding just in case Chris is holding the window position, but the defuse will come in from Nexa. And that is one very safe round for the G2 squad, just determined by Nico. I thought Rops had more than yeah. one there. He's going to be kicking himself. I'd like to see it again, because I think Nico really must have been adjusting. It's not what he was pre-aiming. So round 27, we'll be uh, closing the gap. G2 find 12, the mouse sports perhaps. Yikes. Not out of the woods yet. They did so much. A freebie through the smoke onto Hunter. Rob's pushing forward with his Lurk smoke as well, catching off the second B defender. And then it falls apart. You are going to be very upset with that if you're a mouse. That should have been the 15th every day of the week. Yeah. Some missed shots, maybe some nerves starting to play in here. They will be able to buy again. They do have this AWP and there's Rob's. The hero and the villain in the same round. Sort of the risk that he took pushing into the site, zigzagging through the smoke to avoid the bullets. Yeah, close, but no cigar. Foreheads all being pressed. <laughs> Bemis is playing with the um, flaps on his monitor. I put mine on at home too. I don't know why. You play with the flaps. I don't know like why I put them on. I, the look, I got the. I need the. I need the blinders. Yeah, that's the one. I don't know why I put them on. But uh, they just look cool. Plus, it's my white monitor, so I thought you know. Yeah, why they not? do look badass, but helps you focus on the screen, perhaps. I mean, I am e I'm easily distracted, so maybe like legit might help. Maybe. But with a crowd, I know yeah, there's no crowd at the moment. Maybe it's great. Let's get it in. Chris J is going to for a long peek and he'll be met by force. Flashed off. Kenny would be re peeking into Chris and they've got perfect util. A flash followed by a smoke after Kenny would have taken his shot. And Mouse, with what is two AKs and an AWP, are all set up.
with Util on short. Kenny's not there to hold it. They've got a double long hold and already Util being dropped. Kenny's nade did, looked Ooh. destined for success, but he's flubbed it. He's not in position just yet. Well, now that Nico's tucked in towards the round, oh dear, I do not like this whatsoever yeah, for they got the setup. They got the setup they need. Takes a pot shot, flashing above for Nico. And now he can peek up. Oh, Bemus may be making a round now. Kenny finds Frozen. The bomb's on Carrigan, still waiting to get that down. The Molly buying time. And here he goes. Smokes start to fade. Bombs being planted. A nade might do some significant damage, but it's not enough to take him down as he crosses into that smoke. And now be cautious of your right push. He's got a teammate for that. Kenny starting this retake. Now sports, this could be such a big win. Chris has already found one. Carrigan swings out. They're punishing here. Kenny's hit a good shot, but I'm afraid he's left alone to his own devices Ooh. and Mouse Sports have found themselves the 15th. You know what's insane about that round? It's not how picture perfect that execute was. It was the fact that Mouse Sports did a buy by leaving this up just under 2 2K on the majority of their players other than Bemis, knowing with the loss bonus in the next round, they'd be able to buy again. So this was only a half crack. You know, they've gone in, uh, we'll give it a try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we could buy again in the next round. And they've been able to pick up the 15th in style. And now the money, look at it for G2. Operating with almost nothing going into what could be the final round of play, round 28. Oh dear, oh dear. E2, through Nico's brilliance, did such a good job to get back into the mix. And here it's just been stolen. Nice little pocket execute coming out here from Mouse Sports to get them the much needed round. And now it's just one more against two Deagles. CZ, the AWP that Kenny saved, and a Famous. It's not looking good. It's looking like map three. What can Kenny do? He needs to be a hero right now for G2. Posted forward over towards Catwalk. Do not want to go down to an execute like that again. No, thank you. Has Nico with him. So if Carrigan goes alone, he might just get swung on by multiple G2 members. Ops dealing with the upper dark push. It's something that G2 used to love doing. Late upper tunnels pushes. No presence towards long whatsoever right now as Bimus is starting to take a bit of a glance in towards the long doors. But here's where we need to keep our eyes. Flash forward looking for info. G2 find nothing. Must have set themselves up so well for success. Carrigan's out mid. Jax is trying to pressure that, but he would be walking into a good day. Oh, great shot. And another mid-round aggression. Kenny's found Bemis. Uh-oh, Hunter under scrutiny. Rops is going to throw out his own smoke off the uh, Hunter. But I think that's enough to deter them. They Chris found is. themselves the opening picks. Yeah, well, Chris just couldn't swing on Jax after losing his teammate to the great deagle shot of the Frenchman. He's hanging around, crazy. 40 seconds. Yeah, the bomb's at top cap. Ah, <gasps> so much room. Oh. You heard him. Kenny tucking in. Chris likely to punish. Frozen and Rop suddenly fragging. Is this how it ends? Surely not. The bomb's top cap. They're just getting out jeweled here. 24 seconds. They don't know where they're going. Jax is pushing the tunnels. Nico taking a chance and it's paid off. He's got the bomb loose again. 15 seconds. We're dark. Jax, all you have to do is stop the plant. Uh, Rob's is going to get it down. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, and. Oh! He gets it down in the perfect last second. So close again. This is, this is a, a, a nasty way to watch a dust to end. There's a kit here, so there's somewhere for him to start. If you can find it, it's just in the corner, I think, to his left. Has the AK. Oh, the kit's in spawn. Oh, uh, yeah, CT spawn. That's not fun. Doesn't have the time anymore. Frozen confirms it. The two of them making it a full ace. Frozen triple, robs a double. That